Hello, my name is Einar Jordan, and uh, once again, I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist. I'm a biotech engineer, and part of my job is to find root causes when things don't work out as planned in the medical industry. I work sometimes with doctors, uh, microbiologists, um, subject matter experts of any type. This video is, um, is mostly to talk about histamine uh, and histamine intolerance. Uh, a lot of people have contacted me and talked to me about their histamine intolerance with different conditions, IBS, SIBO, uh, interstitial cystitis of the bladder, etc. I experienced that for a long time. Um, I'm improved significantly. I'm, I'm not pushing the limit to eat an entire leg of ham, but um, improved to where I don't notice it uh, much in uh, using a fecal matter transplant from my young son. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I, I, I noticed a lot of things uh, during many of my experiments. And the, the first time I noticed a big difference uh, was um, when I did a, a carnivore diet. So all of a sudden, a lot of my uh, histamine uh, issues started disappearing. Uh, but I mean, I, I was only eating uh, beef, very, very uncooked, fresh, raw, almost raw beef. I just cinch it 30 seconds per side. Uh, so a lot of the irritation on my bladder and a lot of the other symptoms uh, like fibromyalgia disappeared. Uh, and uh, I understand why. Then the, a lot of people introduced me to the fasting uh, concept of 16 hours or a day or two. And also that, that, that improved uh, uh, everything. I mean, I had, the, the list is, is insanely long of issues that I had. Low vitamin D, uh, high blood pressure, uh, pre-diabetes, uh, I mean, high cholesterol, all of that disappeared. Uh, but again, back to the histamine issue. So then I, I started sort of developing a theory and then when I do the FMT, it also, everything disappeared. So my theory is that because uh, most of us, 99% of the Western world population has severe dysbiosis, uh, partly because of uh, antibiotics, lifestyle, diet, uh, the whole thing of eating three times a day. This is not uh, at the norm for humans uh, or pretty much any animal, um, at least a carnivore animal. Uh, and I'm not a, a strict carnivore anymore. I, I, I do sort of like a, a, a paleo keto um, tribal sort of diet where I, I just eat for about six hours a day tops, maybe one meal in, in that time. And the rest of the time I just don't eat at all. I feel great, which is, uh, I, I didn't expect that. I mean, I, I lived in Cuba and, and being hungry is not fun. Um, but, um, so my theory is that since we're missing this bacteria that digests food, we have a, a larger number of bacteria that ferments food. Uh, and this is normal no, uh, on, on people. However, we have so much more. We also have a lot more mold and yeasts in the gut that are increasing the fermentation. And if you know a little bit about food, you can research this easily. Uh, meats, if you ferment, if you, uh, if you age meat, the histamine level increases. Same with fruit, when they start uh, uh, becoming more ripe, their histamine levels increase. So if this food is in your gut and the bacteria that is unable to remove it is not there. It's going to be aging in there, creating more and more histamine. And it's going to be fermented. And that's why we cannot drink alcohol, most of us, because that fermentation process from the yeast raises the histamine level really, really high. Uh, so this is my theory that fasting helps you remove a lot of that food because you're forced to, to, to consume it all of it. So some people fast days, weeks, months. You can, you can live with that food well over 45 days. Uh, without water, not so much. Um, 
And I'm not suggesting you should fast that long. Uh, if you like to, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, it's, it's probably not practical for a lot of people. But um, this is probably the reason why, very likely the reason why a, a fecal microbiota transplant is so effective because you're introducing this bacteria in that helps you remove a lot of this uh, histamine uh, faster and you don't react as much and, and it is improved even more if you can fast. Uh, because I mean, like, like I always said, I don't think fecal matter transplant will be for a lot of us the, the cure. It will improve our symptoms for, for a while. Some, some will be a, a complete cure. I think uh, from what I have read and a lot of the research I, I, I'm following and with a few people and researchers, it appears that because of the antibiotics we have taken, some of this uh, yeast has mutated. And this yeast now attacks uh, the rest of the microbiome. It, it, it used to work with it, and now it's not working with it, it's working against it. Um, it, it is probably gonna be very difficult to kill. I don't think we have the, the technology or the medication to actually kill it effectively. And uh, uh, it could also damage farther the microbiome. So this is actually uh, something I'm also trying to figure out. And we don't have a lot of really good detection methods for this particular um, uh, yeast or bacteria that's making us sick. Um, we, we can't figure out what it is. We, we do see um, certain uh, buildup of, uh, I think it's sulfur uh, in the gut, which is, uh, is a, a smaller amount is normal, but that, that indicates that there is a yeast in there doing some abnormal level of fermentation. Um, so um, I will continue to do posts as I get more findings. We, we started uh, helping people uh, in a number of ways with uh, fecal microbiota transplants uh, by either giving them advice uh, on how to do it safely. Because there's a lot of people selling uh, their own uh, fecal matter uh, and uh, it, uh, the chances of getting contaminated are very high. So you need to be very careful and, and do your research, study who these people are selling and what they know, what their level of knowledge is uh, and how they process this. And we'll be more than happy to help you uh, identify the right donor and uh, process it safely. Uh, we have a donor in-house that we offer as a last resort, uh, but uh, I will much rather help you solve your own problems. I'm a big believer of us becoming uh, our own masters of our destiny because all of this started by outsourcing. We just want a quick pill and all there is is antibiotics. So the doctor has no choice. All he has to work with is antibiotics. So he's going to give it to you. And uh, in some cases it works well. And in, but but in, in a lot of cases we're finding out that it doesn't. It's, it's kind of like a nuclear explosion that uh, it kills the bad, but it also kills the good. And a lot of times when the bad survives, the bad is going to flourish. And here we are. So I hope you all feel better. Uh, and uh, if anybody has any, any questions, please reach out. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Have a great day.